Embroidery Editing Essentials Part 2, a tour of the Embrilliance platform. When you first open Embrilliance, you will have an empty design space in front of you. You will see that Embrilliance has similar menu and toolbar button options as most programs do. You have file where there's open and save, edit where you can copy and paste and undo and redo. The utility and view and zoom features are more specific to Embrilliance. Same thing looking at our toolbar buttons. We have new, open, save, print, copy, paste, undo, redo, and then we start getting into buttons that are specific to this particular program. We have our general design space here. We have our objects panel where we will see individual designs that we open. And then this is the properties panel at the bottom and the, what's displayed there will depend upon the object that we have selected. In order to show you a lot of the features, let's start by opening a design. You can do that multiple ways. You can go to File, Open. Notice there's also a keyboard shortcut. So on a Mac, it's Command, Open. I believe on Windows, it's Control, Open. You can also click this Open button on the toolbar. So let me open a new design. The Open menu will allow you to navigate to your folders where you have embroidery designs saved. For the purpose of this video, I have um, all the fonts and designs that I want to access saved right here. And so I want to open Shake Your Bunny Tail. Now when you first click on a design file, you'll get a preview down here of the design. It will also tell you the stitch count, how many color stops there are, and it will give you the dimensions in both inches and centimeters. This is the design I'm interested in, so I will click open. And it brings the design centered into the hoop. First of all, let's look at the zoom settings. I tend to like one-to-one. -one. I like this because it gives me a real view of how big the design will be. And that's because I have calibrated my screen to show me the design at a perfect scale. You can calibrate your screen by clicking the Preferences window and go to Calibrate Screen. And here you would hold up a ruler and measure this line and drag this line around until you get this line measurement of five centimeters to match up with the five centimeters on your ruler. And when you find that exact point where the line, the length of the line, see how it changes with the ruler that you have in front of you, then your screen will be calibrated to show measurements one to one. All right, let's take a look at the view menu. Under view, we have this, this where we can manage views, and right now I have my object, properties, and status bar all checked. I like having these three things here most of the time. There are occasions that you might not want them there, but if you uncheck object view, you'll see that that objects panel that was at the top disappeared, and now all I have is a properties panel. If I uncheck properties view, it disappears as well. Same thing with the status bar that's at the very bottom. If you notice, if I uncheck that, it disappears at the bottom. Now this does give me extra real estate space on my screen, so if I'm wanting to take a screenshot of something, I can gain more design space by hiding those, but I definitely prefer for them to be there. So under Manage Views, I can just click Reset Views, and they all return back to the default setting. Also under View, we have things like Draw Stitches in 3D, if, um, right now, I have that selected, and most of the time I operate with it in 3D mode because it kind of gives me a feel for what it's going to look like with thread. But if you uncheck this, what it will do instead is show you stitches. So, for example, it shows me the jump stitches between parts so that I can see how my machine's going to travel from one stop to the one part to the next. Um, when you zoom in, we can do that by using this um, slider here. I can check and I can see the underlay. So I can see, hey, this text has a good double zigzag underlay before the satin stitches start. Or let me scroll down a little bit. I can also examine that on this fill stitch setting, there is a cross hatch of underlay before the fill stitches start. So that's one way you can examine a design quality before you even get going. And again, if I want to return to stitches in 3D, I just check that again. And let's go ahead and zoom back one to one and get this centered in my hoop again. Also under view, I can uncheck draw grid and uncheck draw hoop 
and that gives me just a view of the design, removing the distraction of the grid and hoop if I don't want to see it at the moment. There are keyboard shortcuts for both of these. So for example, if I hit the G key on my computer when nothing is selected, I can toggle back and forth between my grid showing. Same thing for hoop, that's the H key. So I can toggle back and forth between my hoop showing um, by hitting that key. All right, ghost mode, I'm gonna show you what that does in just a moment. I'm gonna uncheck that. Now let's come over here and look at the object panel. When I have the full object selected, down in the bottom toolbar here, I can see what hoop dimension I have, I can see the size of the design that I have selected, I can see its tish count, and I can see how many colors and color stops there are in this design. I also can see the size information up here in the left hand corner. You can choose to have in Brilliant show you the measurements in millimeters or in inches. So you can choose your preference. I like millimeters because it's more exact. If we come back over here to the object panel, if I click this little arrow to expand, I believe on Windows it's a plus sign, I can expand this object and see each of the color stops individually. So if I click on just one color stop, it will highlight what is uh, included in that color stop, and it also the information at the bottom changes. Now I see the dimensions of just the selected section and the stitch count of just that section. Now this is an applique design, and so it's a little hard to tell what precisely is being highlighted here. And also you'll notice the thumbnail, because it's just a running stitch, isn't super clear. This is one of the reasons I like to use ghost mode. Ghost mode brings forward to view the object item that I have selected, and then it fades into the background everything else. And so it allows me to see what I have selected. It kind of gives me x-ray vision so I can see, hey, that's a placement stitch. And the next step is the tack down stitch for that applique part. And then I've got the placement and tack down stitch for the tail. Satin stitches for the bunny, satin stitches for the tail, and the fill stitches for his feet. And then we've got the swirls and the pink text and the blue text. So the nice thing about using ghost mode is I'm able to focus on just what I have selected at the time. Again, under preferences, you can choose ghost mode and you can change the intensity of the ghost mode. I have it down pretty low. If you changed it up to say 35 and click OK, now when you highlight something, the stuff that's faded and kind of blurry in the background is still pretty visible. Um, there's not as much of a distinction. Again, I prefer it to be really low, but that's a personal preference and something that you can set yourself. All right, when I deselect everything, it goes back and shows me the full design as is. I like being able to see each individual color stop so I have a better um, preview of what's gonna happen at my machine. But even better than looking at the individual color stops, we can watch it in Stitch Simulator. So that's what this button does. And if I click that, my toolbar changes a little bit and now I'm in the Stitch Simulator mode. If I click the play button, it will start sewing my design and showing me that, hey, that is, in fact, a placement stitch for an applique design. I can change the speed by changing the slider up here so it'll go faster, or I can drag it down here so it goes a whole lot slower. I can pause it. I can actually drag it at whatever speed I want going back and forth through the design. If I just click later on in the design, it will jump to that point. Also, these little blue arrows allow me to move forward or backward one stitch at a time. And while I'm at a stitch, I get lots of information about that stitch. I get the exact stitch number, where it's located in the hoop, the angle of the stitch, and the length of the stitch. Now, honestly, that's not information I use very often, but it's really cool that it's right there at our fingertips. There's another important feature of this uh, stitch simulator that I will show off later in this video series. When you're done watching it in Stitch Simulator, you just click that button again to turn it off and you're back at editing mode. Before transferring this design to your embroidery machine, you may want to print a template and that's easy to do in Essentials. You can go up to File, Print, and then you have a two-page document that you can print. The first page will be your design 
at 100% size and you'll see that there will be a cross lines to help you find the center of your hoop. The second page will be kind of like a color chart that will show you um, a thumbnail of what's being stitched in each step and the color stops that are included. If say you only want to print page one, then you could go pages from one to one and it will just print that, in which case you could cut out the template and use it to help you perfectly hoop your item. Now this is a design I would probably stitch as is without customizing with other text or resizing. And so I'm at this point just showing you how I would use essentials to look at a design to preview it before going to my embroidered machine. In the next segment, we'll look at opening and editing a design.